everybody, it's Romania Black, and we're on episode 23 of Monster. <laughs> yeah, I am gearing up for a trip in April, so I am recording a little bit ahead to be uh, ready to go with that. But also, the last two episodes of Monster 21 22 have been pretty freaky. They've been really fast paced, and I've felt a little bad <laughs> because I've not discussed as much with them as I have other episodes in this series. But mainly it's because the it's mainly been an action-oriented episode and there's not been a whole... I mean, there has been symbolic elements, there has been thematic things with both episodes, but they've not been like... A, there's not been as much exposition as there have been in previous episodes. And I, I try to, as a reactor, I don't tell myself, oh, I've got to record an hour for every show. No, my like very first reactions were only like 10 minutes long. Um, but as I've gotten more into these series, I find myself, I talk more and more. But I also don't want to make it to where I have to speak for a certain amount of time to feel satisfied. It's just however long I talk is however long I talk. And if it takes an hour and 30 minutes, if it takes 30 minutes, just whatever I'm feeling with those episodes. But these last two episodes, it's not that there's not been stuff to talk about. It's just been a lot of action, a lot of fast paced, you know, things happening and not a big like sit down like Rosso's episode was very dialogue heavy, very thematic, very slow moving. These last two episodes have been bam, bam, bam. And last episode with Longe, with Lunge and Tenma and Lunge becoming this monster himself. It's like, oh my God, everybody's a monster in this show, right? That's all this is, which it's fitting for the title, right? Monster, the title fits. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, I have no clue where we're going because the last episode was very self-contained. Lunge and Tenma finally met. Tinma managed to get away after saving Lunge, and now Lunge is obsessed with tracking him down. Uh, Nina, she managed to like get out of the situation, but she had Mueller with him with her, but he was dying. We didn't get any resolution with that. We don't know where Dieter is. We assume he's safe. That Tinma just kind of dropped him off for the moment. Good thing too, because I would not have put I would not have put it past Lunge to use Dieter as like a hostage situation. Oh my gosh. So yeah, I I'm at this weird point in the series where. I don't know where things are headed and I don't think that's a good thing. <laughs> I feel like I feel like when I don't know where things are going, the craziest stuff can happen. So, uh. <laughs> uh the only comment that I do want to point out from YouTube is that someone was talking about uh, in episode 20 where they said the the names the eth the ethnicity or nationalities of the people were were said dush and I thought it meant Dutch. They were like, "No, no, no, that's German for German." And I was like, "Oh, Gotcha. They're like, no, if they're talking about Dutch, they say like Holland or Hollander. And I was like, okay, that makes much more sense. So yeah, good to know. Good to know the nationality is German. Fair enough. But yeah, that's all the comments I've got. Everybody else has been super respectful, not spoilery, just kind of like laughing on the background going, ha ha ha. That's, that's kind of where I'm at with Monster. But I, I'm really excited, y'all, to dive into this episode. I have no clue what to expect. And for me as a reactor, that's the best place to be. So, or the worst place. <laughs> Depends on how you view it. With this series, it might not be a good thing, but... Mm. In any case, I poured myself a cup of coffee. I'm ready to go. Let's not waste any more time. We are going to start episode 23 of Monster. And we're going to do that here in three two, one, and let's do this. I don't even know if I need White Boar Coon. He's just hanging out because he's in as much shock as I am. <laughs> what the hell? Oh my God. Oh, Eva. I, I said Lunge last episode. Now I'm like, Eva. Oh my God. Just... You, you don't mess with crazy, y'all. <laughs> and she is crazy. Oh, my God. I, Eva's confession. She has seen Johan. She, she is, oh, my God. It's so frustrating. It's so frustrating because she has the proof that Johan exists. She's seen him. She is, uh, this, this is the thing. I mean, Lunge has been throwing a lot of us off. Like, even if you know that Tim is probably not lying, even if you know Tim is not, you know, lying about himself having an alternate personality or whatever, there's always been this seed of doubt 
that's been planted since the beginning of the series that's been like, well, you know, Lungi's pretty convinced that, that Johan's all in Tinma's head, and we've not really seen a lot of Johan in the series. Maybe it is all in Tinma's head, you know? There's just, there's just that. But then, when Eva proves in this episode that she has physically seen Johan the night that Yunkers died, yeah, that, that erases all of, like, Lungi's whole story is complete utter fabrication from here on in. Because why would Eva make up someone? Eva's never seen Johan before, so how would she make him up, right? I mean, she's seen like a kid version of him, but there's no way that Johan is not a real person at this point. I mean, my point is he was obviously always real because Nina shot him in the head and everything, but there was definitely moments from, from I mean, he, he you know, he's a kid, he has surgery, Tim saves him, but then there are moments after that, like with the whole grown up Johan thing, that you do question as an audience member. I've questioned this whole time, like, well, is Tinma, is it all in Tinma's head? Is he imagining this persona of Johan and he imagines it's the adult version of the kid he saved? Is it all in his brain? But no. And then once Nina came on the scene, it was like, okay, well, she believes it too. So probably he's a real person. But now that we've seen Eva has literally seen him, it's like, no, he's real. He has killed Yunkers. He is a serial killer. He's terrifying. And he's still alive. Like we've had all these stories of him as a child. And now we know he's fully like he's actually an adult. <sighs> but the, the very frustrating thing the frustrating thing is that you have Lunge, you have Lunge, who has the facts right in front of him. And he chooses, he chooses his own narrative. He has the facts right in front of him, like whether it's his home life, whether it's Tinma's case, whatever, but he chooses his own narrative and what to believe. And the crazy thing is, Eva is the exact same way. She believes the same thing. She has, I mean, the facts are in front of her that Timma doesn't love her anymore. And she just cannot deal with the fact that she drove the one person who was kind to her and loved her away. And it was all her fault. Like, she's the one that left him. And then she realized what she left behind and then has been trying to unsuccessfully get him back. And so instead... You know, because she can't get him back, instead of just letting go and moving on, she doubles down and is like, well, then he can only be mine. I know what else can have him. And it's like, oh, my God. And the how much she has stalked him is insane, right? Because it took me a second. So I, I wanted to go back real quick. Yeah, Roberto is not the reporter. <laughs> Not the reporter from the last episode. Roberto is the guy that was with Mueller. He was the, the bodyguard of Mueller's, right? Oh my gosh. He was the bodyguard. I just wanted to see like episode, I went and looked up episode 21's, I looked up episode 22 and 21's uh, plot because I was like, okay, what happened? And episode 21, they were like, yeah, the, the butler Roberto. Yeah, so Roberto was the butler of Mueller, okay? So here's the weird thing about Roberto. Roberto is the butler of Mueller, or not really even the butler, he was more of the bodyguard, right? He is the bodyguard of Mueller, who is kind of X'd out at this point, and he is looking for Eva and any photos of Johan. Yeah, because I think the big, I think the big central thing, and that you can't really see that, so apologies, that the thing about it is, is that Johan's existence is, is a way for Timma to get out of being blamed for these murders. The fact that Johan exists is a way for him to get out of it, right? So if we delete all of the images and content of Johan, then no one will suspect him. So that's kind of been the thing, like everyone around Wolf that has associated themselves with Johan, they're pretty much gone. They're not around anymore. And Wolf's the only one around, but he's so paranoid about Johan trying to kill him, he won't show anything off. He only shows it to Tinma because he wants Tinma to kill him and thinks that Tinma's able to do so. So they are deleting, he is having Mueller, or he's having uh, Roberto delete any evidence. 
So yeah, that that's kind of what they've been doing. Like they got rid of Mesner. Mesner's out of the picture. They got him like an overdose on drugs, so he's dead, or he went he died in a drug deal gone wrong. And then Mueller, they tried to set him up to where he wouldn't say anything and tried to like hush him up with like the nice house and the wife and kid. And then he ends up finding out too much. So they're trying to delete any evidence of Johan because that's just further proof of Tinma's innocence. And also, Johan kind of becomes this like mythical figure where you never see him, you just hear about him, and his influence is just there. It's the creepiest thing in this show, the fact that we've only seen Johan like twice as an adult, right? We've seen him in this episode, we saw him way back in episode four, and we saw him like just intermittently, like uh, for the briefest period, I forget which episode it was, but it was like way back. But like he's barely been in the series at all, and it's almost like he's not real. You just, you forget about him. And you're like, the influence of him, though, is everywhere. And so it's so bizarre. But yeah, they're trying to get rid of any evidence of him to almost suggest like he doesn't even exist. Which is smart if you're a serial killer. You don't want to trace back to anything. So, and that's probably why he's trying to get a hold of Nina. Because Nina is literally his only biological connection to him. If Nina is still around, that's proof that he could be too, right? And Tenma, that's a whole case in itself. So, uh, I, it's just insane. It's insane. And I don't think he's going to kill her. I don't think he's going to kill Eva. No, I don't think he's going to kill her. But he might. I, I'm just like, would he kill her? Or would he try to use her to get to Tenma? I mean, my, my prediction is he's going to think about killing her. And then he's going to be like, wait a minute. Maybe we could use her to get closer to Tenma. And she's more valuable alive maybe or he really wants those photos and so he thinks he'll just maybe threaten her to get the photos but he slept with her i'm like girl which granted she was pretty drunk but still oh my god so we can go through this episode i was like i was really confused for the moment thinking that it was roberto was the reporter but no he was the the butler or the bodyguard for mueller oh my gosh and then we go back to like becker becker's in this and we got the flashback with him going all the way back to episode four. Oh my God. Ah! But yeah, her being in the prison. Her being in the prison. And the moment we saw those pink nails, I'm like, oh my God, it's Eva. Of course it is, right? The moment we saw her. Oh, Eva's confession. Yeah, she is. I, I mean, the guy has, Roberto has the right idea in wanting to shoot her because she knows everything. She knows that Johan killed Yunkers. She knows he exists. She knows it wasn't Tenma. Like, she's the eyewitness of the crime. The thing for any crook to do would be to kill her. But I just don't think that she's going to die. I don't know. I feel like, I don't feel Eva is going to die at this moment, right? It just doesn't feel right. Does not feel right. And what I love about this series, we've talked about this in the comments on YouTube and Patreon, is that this show does not force feed you any symbolism. It is a very show not tell series, which I like because it treats you like you're a smart viewer. It treats you like you're a viewer that's intelligent. You can figure things out. Like, like the whole thing with Roberto. They don't explain to you that he was the butler or the bodyguard with Mueller and Happy Holidays, episode 21. They don't explain that to you at all. You just have to figure it out for yourself. And maybe you'll be like me and was confused for a hot second. But, but yeah, maybe you'll be like me and you're like, who was that? Was that the reporter? But then it'll hit you and you're like, oh no, no, it was this character. So they don't come out and have like a subtitle saying who they are and their first appearance. And they don't flash back and show you either. They just trust that you will go back and do research and figure it out yourselves if you're confused. Or that you'll get it, right? It is crazy. But I also love the visual idea that... They show us how desperate Eva is without even, they show us how desperate she is without having to say it. Like the fact that she picks up the cigarette off the ground, straightens it out and lights it, shows us how desperate she is in this moment, right? And the moment she signed off to take her stuff and then realized that, that she was missing something, I'm like, you're never getting it back if it's there at that police station. And yeah, I like the police officers like, I mean, you could sign this lost and found form, but it's probably not going to help you much. It's so, it's just, oof. And then she goes back to the hotel after she said she lost her key. And here's the thing. The Roberto guy, he's like, oh, I didn't even open your bag. I'm like, bullshit, you didn't. You did open that bag. You got the key out. 
you went back to the room, you snuck in, you ransacked the place, and then you found out the photos were missing, and you're like, okay, where's the photos? And went to go find her to figure it out because the thing that you needed wasn't there, right? So, yeah, that's all That's all very apparent now, which I like the guy that owns the hotel is just like, he's trying not to look at her underwear that's lying all over the place, and she's just like, I'm done. Like, I, I felt bad for Eva for part of this episode because I felt better for bad for her for part of this episode because she, it just, the whole unrequited love thing is very hard. But man, she is crazy. She just can't let it go. She's obsessed. Her and Lungay are a great pair because they're both delusional and cannot accept reality. And they both are so obsessed they can't let go of something. And they're both obsessed with Tinma. I'm surprised she isn't helping Lungay personally. But man. So yeah, she goes back to this like mob guy and asking this mob guy in the pinstripe suit asking for a drink and everything. And he's like, well, you lost all your money. What are you going to do? And she like, just how pathetic Eva is. She like keeps asking him to buy her a drink. I mean, he bought you coffee, didn't he? To buy her a drink. And then she basically like asks him to sleep with her. And she's like, well, I'll sleep with you for money. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, girl, he's like, you don't beg people to sleep with you for money. That means it's not going to be good. So, oof. And he just leaves her high and dry. That line, though, that line, though, when he was like, there isn't a man on earth who'd pay, mon to pay to a money to a woman he slept with countless times. He's like, go out in the street and see if you can find a new guy. It's like, oof. That was just, there was some, there were some hard punching lines in this series, in this episode that was like, oh my God. So giddy, though, like just seeing how crazy she gets throughout this. And I love that she, I like, you know, she goes by the homeless man on the street and she stops and looks at him and I'm like, girl, are you going to sleep with him for money? He don't have any money. And then she looks at the, and then you think that, okay, she's got standards. She walks away. She comes back and takes the whiskey bottle and drinks it. I mean, Eva is fierce, if anything, fiercely crazy, but yeah. And so that's when she just feels like she's lucked out. And then the Roberto guy comes with the bag. And says that he he drank with her. Now, when, did he actually drink with her or not? Or did he just take the bag looking through it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and he would know about her father and Tinma because he's been doing... He would be able to do research, right? He's clearly looking for Johan and clearly wants any pictures of Johan. So the question is, is he working with Johan? I mean, I would think he's working with Johan because he got rid of... He probably orchestrated to get rid of Mesner... He was in part of getting rid of Mueller, and now he's trying to get photos of Johan. So I'm going to assume he's working with or for Johan in some capacity, but to the extent we don't know yet. But Roberto is, Roberto's team Johan, which is pretty freaky. <laughs> what I like about this scene is that she asked him to go get a drink, and I'm like, girl, you're sitting there drinking wine. <laughs> like, you are having a drink. Like, you could have just sat there and drank more wine, but... She wants something harder than that. I was like, oh my God. Like goes and gets the, like goes to get the drink. Now he asks her what happened to the photos, right? He asks her what, and he tries to like schmooze her, right? And she seems to be like, she seems to think that she has Roberto in the palm of her hand and like, oh, this guy's being all cordial and flirty and everything. She's like, I could just sleep with him for money and we'll be fine. But now the question is the photos of Johan. They're the ones she was showing the gardener, right? They were the ones showing the gardener. Did she burn them? I think she burned them. I think when she lit the fire with the gardener, she like lit them aflame and just tossed them in the, in the wind and the flames and left with her photo album of her dad and Tenma because she can't let Tenma go. That's what I think, but we don't know that for sure. Or maybe she is hiding the photos, but I don't know. And yeah, but he like tries to schmooze her so badly and she seems to be on the up and up about it. She's like, oh, okay. You're trying to, trying to butter me up with complimenting my dad and everything. Like, okay. And then he like does the whole, oh, I'm jealous of your old boyfriend routine. Mm-hmm. He says, you should just forget about him. I got jealous. Hmm. What a line. And she's like, <laughs> like she kind of laughs at that. Like, oh yeah, just forget about him. <laughs> That's not happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. 
Her and Lunge are cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs in terms of Tenma. And it's kind of scary. But yeah, she's tore out the photos of Johan in that surgery. So, I mean, probably a good thing because Nina's in those photos. So probably good that she tore them out. But what are we, what do we do with that, right? And he just wanted the photos. And she's like, he's like, well, where are the photos? And she's like, who cares? And at that point, I figured that she threw them into the fire, that she doesn't have them because she hated that kid and wanted to get rid of him. I don't know, because that kid in the surgery with him kind of started the whole thing. It was the catalyst of everything going wrong. Saving Johan ruined her life, essentially. That's the crazy thing, is that by saving Johan, uh, saving Johan ruined her life. Because, yeah, I mean, I don't know why she would. I don't know why she would like Johan. Because Timma saved him, it caused the strife with her dad. It caused the whole rift between them. It caused everything leading up to her dad being killed with the poison candy. I mean, Johan's the real murderer and the one responsible for everything. And she knows he's an adult now, so I'm like, girl, put two and two together that he did kill your... It's like, ugh. Nope. 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 But, yeah, it just... Ugh. And maybe she can't believe that Johan was the killer. Maybe she just can't. I don't know. But they go to the bar and everything. And then he says he was a Nietzsche in South France. Yep. A man who... Okay. The man who'd hired me as a bodyguard for years was killed. Yep. So that's Mueller. So Mueller's dead at this point. So we know it's after episode 21, the events. That's when the company collapsed. So that's interesting. We don't exactly know what the time frame is. And I don't want to know. I don't want y'all to tell me yet. So we, we know that this is after the events of episode 21, but we don't know where it is in relation to the episode events of 22. We're not sure yet, but this has happened after, after Mueller has died. So he did die. Okay. Which we all kind of saw that coming. And he's like, now is what's important. And that's, and then the Al Green song comes on. Mm-hmm. Which, good taste, Tenma. I love that Al Green song. It's really good. But she can't let him go. Even when they're on the dance court and she's like, Tenma couldn't dance, but I just showed him what to do. I knew a man who loved this song and couldn't dance. And she's like, we did the same thing. She's just, she's so in love with him and she messed up so bad. And she's realized she messed up so bad that she just can't let it go. And it just, it's, it's haunted her, right? And she just cannot stop it with him. I, I do love in this series the very not subtle liquor placement, product placement. Like, that is a straight up Jack Daniels bottle. And it's not even trying, it doesn't even try to not be a Jack Daniels bottle. It is straight up the label. Like, they don't even try to get around it. I'm like, wow. And so, yeah. And she, she tries to offer him a drink. But he says no, and he says, where are the photos? And that smack? Oh, I was not expecting the smack. I, I was not expecting it at all. I was, you know, we've been kind of conditioned to see Eva go through this cycle where she seduces a guy, sleeps with him, leaves him, or he gets fed up with her and leaves her, and that just kind of goes on and on. But then adding this element of this guy wanting to find Johan and finding the evidence of him is just like another whole thing coming. And that smack was like out of nowhere. I was like, oh my God. And he wants to know where the photos are. But the moment he says he knows where Tenma is, she starts laughing. Cause she's like, you, you think you have me. You think you've got me, but no, 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 no. I'm the one who's winning this round because you have something I want. And if it comes to Tenma, I'm... She's basically like, you think you're crazy? I'm crazier than you, Mother Trucker. And it's like, Hoo -hoo. And she says, the photos you're talking about have that little boy in them, don't they? I was like, oh my God. And then he, she's like, his name is Johan. And then she starts laughing. And his face, she's like, I saw him. And he, his eyes, when she says he's become quite the handsome young man. So, oh God, that face where she's just like, I saw him in, in Dusseldorf a year ago. Like her mouth is just curved up into that creepy smile. 
Oh, that that animation on the the hit of the cheek though, like it's already bruised and purple. Oh, so yeah. So the thing about it is, is that she has seen adult Johan. She's seen him. Now the big question is, the big question is, we get the we get the moment where they see each other, but it cuts before we see if he said anything to her. Did she really just see him and that was it? Or did he speak to her? I, I don't know. I don't know because this whole next segment is she's been stalking him. So we see Becker taking him out on dates, like double dates with these women. And just the knowledge, like going back to episode four, the knowledge that she's been stalking him the whole time is insanity. Like, she was watching him the entire time. Oh, my gosh. And just just being there. Ha! Huh. She was watching him the whole time. And was just looking at him from afar and keeps saying the, You are mine. Oh, my God. She's like, I'll take you back. Like, that, she, that whole thing of being, You are mine. That possession, right? Like, that's all she wants. And she, like, she follows him everywhere to the point where she, like, goes around and then she meets with Becker. I'm so happy to see Becker. I'm like, Becker's amazing. And I, I never thought we'd see him again. I thought that we were, we only saw him those first couple episodes. He was a really good character and we'd never see him again. But flashback city it is. I'm so happy. But yeah, he basically, the one thing about Becker, I was like, dude, this is his ex fiance You know how crazy she is. And if you don't, you should have known because she was the director's daughter. And you're talking about setting Timma, even if she wasn't crazy, even if you didn't know that Eva was crazy, I'm sorry, but unless she asks about Timma specifically, and does she, that's the question. He says it's just as the rumors say. She's like, I've been married and divorced three times and living off my inheritance. So yeah, she's, you know, been through all these crazy marriages. And she asks how Becker have been, has been. And I love that Becker's like me. He's like, well, I'm the same as I always have been. I'm not moving up the ladder. I'm just sticking where it is. There's no future for my career. He makes it sound like he's like, hey, he's like Tinma's the head surgeon. You know, he's going to be director someday, they say. And he's like, there's no reason for you to sleep with me. I'm not going anywhere. He definitely knows her character, right? He knows how she is. And so he says, it's fun though. And he says, promotions aren't the only thing in life. I say no thanks to a life like Tinma's, one without any women or fun. So he, he does, he doesn't outright bring up the subject, but he sets her up to ask about it, right? He does technically bring it up because she asks, is Kenzo or Dr. Tinma still unmarried? And he goes, I'm like, Becker, Becker, you know the reputation of Eva. You know her reputation and how she is. You kind of make the joke in this conversation, like, oh, don't sleep with me, I ain't got a future. You almost seem like you're in on the joke. So when she asks you if he's still unmarried, all you have to do is say yes, and then move on and change the subject. But for whatever reason, he tells her, I've been introducing him to countless women, and I'm like, Becker, it's kind of in poor taste to tell someone's ex-fiance that you're setting her ex-fiance up with countless women. And that's crossing a little bit of a taste line, right? Am I the only one that thinks that? And he says he always puts work first. And he's like, I've set him up on another date. I'm like, dude, you should have stopped like three sentences ago, right? And so with Eva, I feel like Eva gets a little bit of a satisfaction there. Where she's like, okay, he's not dating other women. He could still be mine. He's too busy. Like, she gets somewhat satisfied. But then he starts talking about the state legislator daughter. And Eva gets jealous. If she's not good. And then he says, if she's not good enough for him, I don't know who would be. And I'm like, Becker, why are you saying this to the Queen Mary of the Captain Crazy? Mm -mm. And then he's like, why'd you call me out here? And I'm like, did, did you think she was asking for you? Because you seem to know that that's not the case. He's like, why did you call me? What's the reason? 
And he's like, if anything is the problem or you need anything, I'll help you. And that's when he says, don't let him see her. The state legislator's daughter. Don't let Kenzo see her. And then, and then Becker says, don't tell me you still have feelings for Tenma. I'm like, dude, I would have figured that out six sentences ago. Becker, no, but he like, he set her up. I mean, she just, and, and from there I was like, okay, all right. She just, she doesn't want Becker to set him up with the, with the legislator's daughter. She still has feelings for him. You know what? That's a bit stalkery, but it's okay. It's fine. And then the following scene is Tinma at his apartment and she's standing out in the rain, staring at him like a crazy person. Like, girl, stand under an awning, if anything. Because, yeah, he's just looking out the window wistfully. And she just stands there looking at him. But she doesn't make any attempt to talk to him. Right? Or was that outfit she was wearing from when they met? Was that outfit she was wearing from when they met in the restaurant? And she tried to get him to take her back and he wouldn't do it? I'd have to go back and look. I would have to go back and look from episode four. Actually, they did see each other in episode four, but she was wearing something different. She was wearing something different. Hmm. Hmm. So we did see her in episode four, but she was wearing something different. Okay. <sighs> so weird. So weird. But yeah. Ugh. But she followed him. She was following behind him while they was going to, while he was getting the clock for Yunkers. She followed him there, and then she went ahead, knowing that Becker did not call off the date, and she got mad and went to where the date was. And basically, that whole intimate detail about how Tim has like kissed the mole on her inner thigh, oh, that's just like, oh, that's such like an intimate, sensual detail that she gives that woman. No wonder she left. She was probably like, what the hell? And she's probably like, this woman's crazy. And also, if Tinma is lying and still with her, that's not cool. So I'm glad that I, what's interesting is I wonder if, what's interesting is I wonder if Becker ever apologized to her. And she was like, yeah, this crazy, crazy blonde lady came in and talked to me. And he was like, Eva. Or if he never connected two and two together. That's a really good point. Did he ever talk to the legislator's daughter and did she ever say Eva came in the restaurant and told him that? Because if he realized it was Eva, he probably could have vouched for Tenma and been like, whoa, he wasn't with her. She lied to you. But we don't know if that's ever a thing that will come up again. We don't know! <laughs> Dang it! We don't know! So, oh man. But we do know that from there on, she not only stalked him to the dinner, but she followed him. She has this like gaudy locket on, right? This gaudy locket that does not match her outfit at all. It's the weirdest thing. But I mean, it's the 80s and it's the mid 90s. So why not? But yeah, she ends up following him in the red car as he goes to the hospital. And and she tries to seem sympathetic in there. Like, like she's going to go talk to him. But... I, it's almost like she stalks him this whole time, but she knows that there's no way he's ever going to take her back. And so she knows she's wasting her time, but she can't help it because she's so obsessed. Like that look on her face in the parking lot is one where she knows it's futile. She knows there's no point in chasing after him. He's not going to be with her, but she just can't help it. And it's, it's so fascinating, right? The part that was kind of, the part that made me honestly very concerned for where this story was going was because when she said that she had met Johan like a year ago in Dusseldorf, I thought, one, that she'd actually sat down in a restaurant with him and talked to him. And I was like, what? But that wasn't the case. And then two, I thought that maybe he had found her and talked to her during all of this. And I was like, ugh. But that's not the case either. What's happened is that she just was stalking Tinma and then happened to stumble upon him at the place where Yunkers is killed. But at this moment, we don't see, we see Yunkers go out the back and escape, but we don't see him escape here. And so part of me when Tinma was like, wait, Yunkers, and he runs off, we never see Yunkers himself. We just see Tinma running away. So part of me was like, 
Is Tampa making it all up? Is it all in his head? Is it? But it's not, right? She chases after him. And then she chases after him. And it starts to rain. And that's when she realizes that she's blown out her heel. Her heel is completely useless. And she just kind of like collapses at this moment. She's like, not only can I not catch up with him, but now that my heel's broken, I can't keep running after him. So if he does run away a second time, I can't chase after him. And then that's when she hears the footsteps and she thinks that it could be Tenma. And she backs up, but no, it is Johan. And it's so creepy. Like he's just in the shadows. He's just in the shadows. It's the creepiest thing. And then she just sees him and he's slowly, like it's just pouring down rain. She's like, I saw him one year ago in Dusseldorf. And we don't see Tenma and we don't see Yunkers. We just see that was Johan, wasn't it? And then from the shadows, he slowly looks over and the light shining in his face and he's looking right at her. And we don't know what happened from there. We don't know if she just saw him and he just looked at her and walked on or if he said anything or if they had a conversation or what. We don't know. But we don't see like like the thing with Tinma and the thing with Yunkers. We don't see anything of that. And that's when she said she saw him. And so she ended up sleeping with him anyway. Or he ended up sleeping with her. Ugh. And get like his hairy chest. And then he says, she's seen Johan. I guess I'll have to kill her. <sighs> ah! So we had Lungay's trap. We have Eva's confession. But yeah, here, here's the thing about it all that's kind of just insane. We have Johan who is having evidence being removed of him. Like evidence removed so we'll never see it again, right? So that we, evidence is removed to create doubt around his character. Then you have Tinma, and Tinma is having all of the alibis and innocence for him removed. Like all the evidence of Johan's existence is getting removed. And for Timma, like all the alibis that he could have are getting removed too, right? So like Junkers is gone. Um, um, oh, Ma Moore is gone. Um, the fact that Nina's gone missing, she's not around him. This guy wants to kill Eva, he thinks, because she knows she has the alibi for Timma that he wasn't there, that he wasn't the killer, there was someone else there. It's just... And then Lunge is kind of like a big, like, evidence destroyer himself because he's just basically either lying or doing whatever he can to not acknowledge the facts of how Timma could be innocent. So, it's crazy. And it's almost like Eva has stared into the eyes of a monster and has become a monster herself because she's just so obsessed with him. It is absolutely bonkers I was not expecting this episode at all mm -mm. we have established that Eva has no inheritance left she just took her money and ran but she squandered it all on booze surprising no one and so she just doesn't have much to her name left so the question is is the guy Roberto is the bodyguard is he going to kill her or knowing that she's fiercely loyal to Tinma but wants to see him is he going to try to use her to be a tool or a pawn used by, uh, by Johan? I could see maybe him keeping her around because she's obsessed with finding Tinma and maybe trying to get her to be used to that means, but I don't know. These episodes have just been so, so like just so fast and so much is happening, but we're starting to see the threads come together, right? Because we have Tinma and Dieter. And Dieter is tied through his experience with the with the one man, um, oh, the the heart man that was really mean, tying to Johan. 
And we know that Johan is tied to Nina, who's off here by herself, but she has had encounters with Tim and them. And then now we know that Johan has ties to Eva, who has ties to Timma. And then we also know that we have Lunge. And, well, Lunge doesn't have any ties to Johan yet. Lunge's not seen Johan. But we know that Lunge has ties to Tinma and also has ties to Eva. Right? Hmm. Anybody else that I'm missing? Don't think so. So, yeah, you have Nina and Tinma and uh, Dieter and Eva all having ties to Johan. And then you have Lunge with ties to both Tinma and Eva. Right? Hmm. And so there is like a common thread between all of them. But the question is like, when are we going to ravel them all together? The one that needs to meet Johan is Lunge. He's the only one of the group that's not really met Johan. Like Dieter hasn't met him technically, but I don't want Dieter to meet him. <laughs> I don't want this little kid to meet him. But Lunge has not met Johan yet. And I feel like Lunge needs to meet Johan. I feel like that needs to happen to prove to Lunge that Tinma is not using a persona, but is actually Johan. So, oh my God. That is insane. And I can't wait for the next episode. <laughs> but I'll probably wait to hear some more comments on YouTube and Patreon. So in the meantime, um, I'm excited to hear your comments and what you all thought of this episode. Oh my gosh. Like, surprised me. So... I hope y'all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And yeah, I will be back next week with episode 24 of Monster. <laughs> Bye.